Welcome to the fourth lesson of uh, fourth module which is on torsion part 4. Now in the previous three lessons on torsion we have seen uh, several aspects that uh, what happens to a bar when it is subjected to a twisting moment and this twisting moment could be uh, in a bar which is of solid circular shaft or could be in a bar which is having a cross section which is tubular in form that means there is hollowness in the shaft and also we have seen if these bars are used for transmitting mechanical power to some other devices then how the stresses and the deformation generate. Now we are going to look into some more aspect of torsion in this particular lesson. Now uh, it is expected that once this particular lesson is completed one should be able to understand the concept of tensile stress and failure pattern due to torsion. In fact we will look into that uh, due to the twisting moment we have seen that the shear stress generate and we have the maximum stress on the periphery of the surface of the bar and then we look into that what are the values of the maximum normal stresses and what is the consequence of those normal stresses in the bar. Secondly, we will look into that one should be able to understand the effect of torsion in indeterminate system. Now so long we have discussed aspects of the determinate system that means if the twisting moment is acting in a bar then we can evaluate the resisting twisting moment uh, from simple equilibrium equations. Now we are going to look into the systems where by using equilibrium equations alone uh, the internal resisting twisting moment cannot be determined. So as we have seen in the past that we have called the systems where we cannot evaluate the internal forces using equilibrium equations alone they are indeterminate system. Now for such indeterminate system if twisting moment acts then what are the consequences that we will be looking into in this particular lesson. And finally we will evaluate stresses and deformation in circular bars uh, due to torsion. Well then the scope of this particular lesson includes uh, we will look into the aspects of the previous lesson as we will go through the answers of the questions. Then uh, we will be evaluating the normal stress due to torsion and its consequences. Then evaluation of stresses and deformation in indeterminate systems due to torsion. And then we will be looking into the examples for evaluation of stresses and deformations in bars of circular cross sections. Well uh, let us look into the answers of the questions which uh, we had posed last time. Now the first question uh, posed was that if a bar made of a material which cannot withstand tension uh, is subjected to torsion then what will be the effect. Now as you have seen that uh, uh, when we test a bar under axial pull in it undergoes extension and the bar which can undergo a large extension we call those kind of material as the ductile material. Whereas when we pull the bar it does not elongate much it uh, because of the tensile stresses it uh, breaks or it fails we call those kind of material as brittle material. Now if we use a material which is a brittle kind of a material and if it is subjected to a torsion and thereby there will be a tensile stresses tensile normal stresses then what is the consequence of that that we will be looking into. So let us uh, look into that aspect of it. Now uh, if we have a bar uh, which is subjected to a twisting moment of this form now here this particular twisting moment is the positive moment as we had defined earlier. Now because of this see this is the kind of stresses that will generate on the surface which is uh, the twisting moment which is in the form of a pure shear. Now if we try to find out the value of the normal stress corresponding to that. Now here because of this uh, shearing stress this is a positive shear so this is sigma positive axis this is tau positive axis. So if we plot that since normal stress is 0 shearing stress value is over here and for the complementary part we have normal stress 0 shearing stress over here. Now if we plot the Mohr cycle corresponding to this then this is the value of the maximum normal stress which we call as sigma 1 and this sigma 1 is of magnitude equivalent to again the tau this magnitude being tau sigma 1 is also equals to tau. So the maximum normal stress also is tau. Now this particular point is at an angle of 90 degree from the reference 
plane which is this. So, in actual plane, so this is the Morse plane. Now, with reference to this, it is at an angle of 45 degree, where the direction of normal stress will occur and perpendicular to this surface is the plane along which it is expected the failure to occur. Now, here uh, if we look into that uh, this is the positive value which is occurring and uh, this is the this is the plane 45 degree with respect to the x axis and perpendicular to this plane is the failure line and this is the plane along which it will fail. Now, if we take the bar in which if we have the torsion acting in this form, then again corresponding to this if we plot the Mohr circle, we will have the sigma axis on this side, tau axis over here. Now, this direction of shear stress being negative, so we will have the point over here, the complementary point will come over here and if we plot the Mohr circle again, the normal stress is going to be equals to sigma 1 here and which is equals to tau. Now, this point will act in a clockwise direction with reference to the uh, reference plane. So, this is the reference plane normal to this is this particular line and if we go 45 degree in the clockwise direction, then this is the direction of the normal stress sigma 1 and perpendicular to this is the failure line along which the uh, failure occur. Now, this can be demonstrated using a very simple experiment. Now, let us say that we take a piece of chalk which is a kind of a brittle material and in fact, if we apply a twisting moment for the first case which is in the uh, anti clockwise direction, then you see that we get the failure is in this form as we have seen. This is the line which is inclined at an angle of 45 degree and if you look into this particular line which is equals to the 45 degree as we have seen in the first case. Similarly, if we perform a uh, similar kind of experiment, uh, but this time we apply the twisting moment in a clockwise direction as uh, we have seen in the second case, then you see the kind of failure which we have obtained that is corresponding to the second case. So, this is a simple experiment to demonstrate that uh, twisting moment when it acts into the bar, uh, the failure line occurs along the perpendicular direction of the direction of the stress or which is the uh, failure plane. Well, uh, let us uh, look into this aspect a little more clearly that this is the failure line along which because of the twisting moment along this, this bar is uh, failing over here. Well, uh, let us look into the second question then that what is the relation between power and the torque. Now, having looked into that because of the uh, twisting moment, the tensile stresses which is getting generated on the surface, it causes failure which is perpendicular to the direction of the normal stress. Now, the second question is what is the relation between the power and the torque when a shaft is subjected to a twisting moment. Now, in the last lesson we had looked into that uh, power is generally defined as the rate at which work is done. Now, when we apply a twisting moment to a shaft, then the work done W may be defined as the torque which is of constant magnitude which is multiplied with the angle of rotation psi. So, power then can be written as P is equals to the time derivative of the work done, the rate of rate at which the work is done. Now, W being T times psi, so this is d d t of T psi. So, then uh, T being constant, this is equals to T times d psi d t and d psi d t is the angular speed which we have defined as omega. So, T times omega is equals to the power, where omega is defined in terms of the radian per second. Now, let us look into the some aspects which we had discussed last time uh, about the units of it that power which we generally write in terms of uh, watt is equal to the twisting moment which is in Newton meter and the omega the angular speed which is in radian per second. Now, frequency uh, 
uh, which we say the revolution per second, one revolution per second and for one revolution uh, as we have seen that it has to undergo 360 degree which is equals to twice by uh, radian. So, we can write the angular speed omega is equals to twice pi f. Now, if we substitute for omega as we have seen p is equals to t times omega. So, for omega if we write twice pi f then power is equals to 2 pi f t where p is in watt f is in uh, cycles per second or revolution per second or in hertz. Now, sometimes frequency is used in terms of rpm which is a revolution per minute and designated by the term n. Then n by 60 this is revolution per minute which is uh, converted in second is equals to f. So, n from this is equals to 60 times f. So, thereby the power p is equals to twice pi n t by 60 where t is in Newton meter again and n is rpm the revolution per minute. Also sometimes we uh, define the uh, power of the equipment from which the power is getting transmitted through the sap in terms of the horsepower which is in FPS unit. Now, so you should know the relationship between the horsepower and then the, the corresponding in SI units which is in watt. So, one horsepower is equals to 746 watt approximately and uh, in uh, foot pound again 550 foot pound per second. So, uh, given the relation given the values of the power in terms of horsepower or in watt uh, we can write down in terms of watt and then we can compute the values of the torque. So, these are the relationship between the uh, power and the torque and then corresponding uh, units which are being used uh, for uh, defining the power. Now, the last question which was posed was how will you evaluate stresses and deformation in circular bars for indeterminate system. Now, as we have discussed uh, so long we were looking into the systems of the bars where the bar is fixed it at one end and subjected to the twisting moment or if you have a sap uh, which is fixed at one end may be non-uniform subjected to non-uniform torsion at different points. Now, in all these cases we could evaluate the values of the internal resisting twisting moment by employing the equations of equilibrium. If we could take the free body diagram and from that free body diagram we could able to evaluate the values of the internal resisting twisting moment. Now, if we go for a system in which the equilibrium equations alone are not adequate to evaluate this internal resisting twisting moment, then those systems are no longer a determinate system. So, if we come across such indeterminate system, then what will be the uh, ways by which we can evaluate the internal resisting twisting moment. Now, one of such examples is supposing if you have a bar which is fixed at both ends and then if it is subjected to a twisting moment, then what will be the uh, stresses in the bar or what will be the deformation in the bar which because of this twisting moment. If we like to evaluate that this particular problem we cannot solve it by using equations of equilibrium alone. Now, for that we will have to as we have seen in the past that a bar which is a which is an indeterminate one for evaluating the stresses and the strain the axial stress and the strain. Uh, there we had to resort to the uh, equations for the compatibility. Now, here also for indeterminate system we will have to generate additional equations from the equations of compatibility. So, once we have the equations of equilibrium and equations of compatibility then we will be in a position to evaluate the internal resisting twisting moment from which we can compute the value of stresses and the deformation. So, let us look into that that how do we carry out that. Now, let us look into a system in which uh, a bar or a shaft which is having different diameter let us say this diameter here is d 1 and this diameter here as d 2 and it is uh, clamped at this particular end as well as it is clamped at this end. Now, if this is clamped and is subjected to a twisting moment let us call this as say t 0 then what will be the values of the twisting moment at this end since it is clamped and also what will be the uh, stresses and the deformations in these particular zones. 
Now, as uh, we can we can write down the reactive twisting moment like this. Now, this is the positive twisting moment as we have defined that when it uh, the twisting moment is an uh, in anti clockwise direction, then the direction of the vector notation or the direction of the twisting moment is towards the thumb, and that is what has been shown over here. The twisting moment which is acting over here T0 is the vector direction is this. So, this is T0. Now, if that is acting in this particular shaft, then what are the reactive uh, twisting moment at these two ends? They are uh, in the opposite direction which is in a clockwise form and let us call let us say that this point is A and this point is B and accordingly let us call this as twisting moment at A and twisting moment at B. Now, obviously then the twisting moment T0 uh, will be distributed in this uh, reactive twisting moment which is T A and T B. So, T0 is equals to T A and T B. Now, this is the equation of equilibrium. Now, the external twisting moment which is acting in the shaft is getting equilibrated by the support twisting moment T A and T B. So, T0 is equals to T A plus T B. So, this is the equation of equilibrium. Now, as you can see from this particular expression that T A and T B are the two unknown parameters and we have only one equation. So, from one equation you cannot solve the two unknown parameters. So, you need an additional parameter to be brought in. Now, if you look into this particular one, now we consider a case as we have done in the past for indeterminate system that this particular support we remove it, we remove this support from this particular shaft. Now, if we remove this particular support, then what happens? The consequence of this is that because of the twisting moment which is acting the T 0, this will cause the rotation of the shaft and let us say the rotation which uh, it undergoes at this particular end, if we call this rotation as theta 1 which is uh, at end B is being caused by the twisting moment T 0. Now, let us remove this twisting moment and let us apply the re resistive twisting moment which is T B at this end and this T B also is going to cause a uh, twisting moment over here. Let us call this as theta 2. Now, this particular support, support B being fixed in position, so it is expected that there would not be any rotation because of the twisting moment. So, the net rotation at support B is equal to 0. So, the theta 1 which we get corresponding to the twisting moment T 0 and theta 2 which we get corresponding to the resistive twisting moment T B that should be equal to 0. So, if we substitute that, that means if we write theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to 0 and then theta if we write in terms of a twisting moment T, then we get another set of equations. So, we get say equation 2 and this is equation 1. So, from these two equations, we have two equations now and we have two unknown parameter T and T B, then we can solve for T A and T B. So, an additional equation has been generated from the uh, deformation compatibility in this particular case and we call this as a compatibility equation. So, for indeterminate system, in fact, we need the equation of equilibrium to be written, we need equation of compatibility to be written, which is as a function of the twisting moment, I mean which is as a function of the rotation theta and then we write the torque displacement relation, so that we can get this compatibility equation in terms of twisting moment T. Then we have two equations from which we can compute the unknown values T A and T B. Now, let us look into another kind of a system in which uh, if we apply a twisting moment. Now, let us say that we have a solid bar, this is the uh, solid bar of diameter d 1 is inserted within a tube, this is a tube, let us call this as 1 and this tube as 2. Now, this is the tube, this, uh, this is the one side cell, this is the other side, the, which is a circular one. Now, a circular tube is there within which we have a solid shaft inserted in. On one end it is clamped, the other end we have put a plate which is connected to both the tube and the solid shaft. Now, if the whole assembly is subjected to a twisting moment, then what is the consequences? Now, since both the ends are fixed naturally and you have two elements, one is the tubular shaft, another one is a solid shaft 
and both the elements are subjected to a twisting moment in a combined form. Now, if we like to find out that what is the shear of this twisting moment between the two elements the tubular shaft and the solid shaft, there are two twisting moments that will be shared by these two elements, then uh, how do we evaluate those twisting moments. Now, let us look into this. Now, supposing if we take off this particular plate rigid plate from this and take out the shaft over here. So, this is the solid shaft internal solid shaft which is subjected to a twisting moment vectorial notation of which is this and let us call that twisting moment as T 1 that means, the external twisting moment T which is acting in the composite system is uh, shared by the shaft and the tube. Now, the twisting moment which is acting in the solid shaft central solid shaft is equals to T 1, the twisting moment which is acting in the tubular form is equals to T 2. So, we have T 1, uh, T 1 and T 2 and the diameter of the internal shaft is equals to D 1 and the di external diameter or the outer diameter of the tubular shaft is D 2. Now, we will have to find out the values of T 1 and T 2. Now, if we write down the equilibrium equation, then external twisting moment T is equals to the twisting moment T 1 plus T 2, because this external twisting moment T is to be shared by the solid shaft and the tubular shaft. Now, again uh, we have only one equilibrium equation and we have two unknown parameters T 1 and T 2. So, from this single equation we cannot evaluate the values of T 1 and T 2. So, we need an additional equation to be generated, uh, so that we can evaluate these two unknown values T 1 and T 2 and this additional equation can be generated if we take the compatibility into account. And what is the compatibility criteria in this particular case? Here you have the composite system where you have external tube in which you have a solid shaft and both are enclosed within two fixed supports. Now, when this is being twisted, now the whole composite system is undergoing a rotation and also since both the tube and the solid shaft are under the constraint of these two plates, they are expected to undergo the same amount of rotation. So, the rotation in the solid shaft and the rotation in the tubular shaft, they should be identical and that is the compatibility from which we can generate additional equation. So, now if we say that, if we say this is the uh, rotation theta 1 uh, that this particular solid shaft is undergoing because of the twisting moment T 1 and if we say theta 2 is the uh, twisting moment, I mean the rotation that is being uh, that this tubular shaft is undergoing because of the twisting moment T 2, then we say that theta 1 is equals to theta 2 and this is compatibility equation. So, this is our equilibrium equation where we say that T is equals to T 1 plus T 2 and this is our compatibility where theta 1 is equals to theta 2. Now, theta and theta, theta 1 and theta 2 now if we write in terms of the twisting moment as we know that T by j is equals to tau by rho is equals to g theta by L. So, theta in terms of T is nothing but is equals to T L by g j. So, the value of theta in terms of T is equals to T L by g j. So, if we write down that theta 1, theta 1 is equals to T 1 L being the same because both the both are within the same confinement. So, the length of the solid shaft and length of the tube are identical and let us call that as L. So, T 1 L by G and let us call this as J 1 which is the polar moment of inertia of the solid shaft. Likewise, theta 2 will be equals to T 2 L by G J. Now, if we have the same material or J 2, if we if both the tube and the solid shaft made out of the same material, then the shear modulus value g will be identical. But if this tube and the solid shaft they are of different material, then you will have two different values of g and correspondingly we will use uh, g 1 and g 2 to make it more general. So, now that if we equate this theta 1 and theta 2, we can uh, get a relationship between t 1 and t 2. So, that is the second equation which will be generated from this compatibility. So, equation 1 and equation 2 can uh, give us the values of T 
T 1 and T 2. So, these are the two uh, equations T 1 T equals to T 1 plus T 2 and theta 1 equals to theta 2 or T 1 L G J 1 is equals to T 2 L G J 2 will uh, give us the values of T 1 and T 2. So, that is how uh, for an indeterminate system when they are subjected to a twisting moment, we make use of equation of equilibrium, equation of compatibility and then uh, the torque displacement relationship to arrive at that what will be the equations from which we can evaluate the unknown twisting moment or the internal resisting moment. And once we know this twisting moment, then we can take the free body diagram of the whole shaft at any point and then correspondingly we can find out what are the internal resisting twisting moment and from which we can compute the value of the, the shear stresses which are generated from the twisting moment and the angle of uh, twist because of this twisting moment. Well, then uh, if we look into the whole of this uh, which we have uh, done so long for the determinate and indeterminate system. Now, torsion of circular shaft when we talk about the determinate system, the equations which we need are the equilibrium equations and mind that that equilibrium equations alone are adequate to evaluate the internal resisting twisting moment and all we need is the torque displacement relation or torque rotation relationship from which we can compute the value of the uh, stresses. Now, also the geometry of deformation as we have seen which is in terms of the rotation it varies and uh, shear strain varies linearly from the axis of the shaft that we have seen that gamma is equals to d theta d x uh, times rho. So, it varies linearly with respect to the radius from the center as it, is go, as it goes it varies linearly. And shear strains are related to the shear stress which is the constitutive relationship. So, with these three aspects we can solve any determinate system. Now, in case of indeterminate system they are also identical except that. So, you need equations of equilibrium you need to look into the geometry of deformation and of course, the shear strain is related to the shear stress which is the constitutive relationship. Now, apart from this these alone are not adequate to give the equations for evaluating the internal resisting twisting moment. Now, in case of indeterminate system we need another criteria which is the equation of compatibility and from this equation of compatibility we can generate another equation and from which we can solve the internal resisting twisting moment and thereby uh, internal twisting moment at any point in the shaft in terms of those support moment. So, now that you are in a position to distinguish that if a bar which is uh, supported at one end and subjected to a twisting moment, then we can compute uh, twisting moment at any point whether it is uniform torsion or non-uniform torsion or whether the shaft is uh, uniform or non-uniform and accordingly we can compute the value of the twisting moment and I mean the stresses and then corresponding the angle of rotation. Now, if the bar is not supported on one point alone it is supported at two points or two sides then it is uh, when it is subjected to a twisting moment then equations of equilibrium alone is not adequate to evaluate the uh, internal resisting twisting moment and we need the support of equation of equilibrium to generate additional equation from which we can compute the values of internal resisting twisting moment. So, now let us look into some of the examples uh, to demonstrate this. Well, now the first example is the one which of course, I had posed last time and uh, I am sure you have done and this aspect we discussed last time that the shafts are generally used uh, to transmit power and in this particular case a tubular shaft is designed to transmit 120 kilowatt power at a frequency of 15 hertz. Now, the inside diameter of the shaft is to be 3 fourths of the outside diameter. So, if outside diameter is d then the inside diameter is 3 fourth of d which is 0.75 times d. Now, if the allowable shear stress is the 45 MPa then what is the minimum required diameter d? What will be the minimum required outside diameter d? So, let us look into this particular uh, example that how do you solve it. Now, here the value of power given as equals to 120 kilowatt 
and the frequency at which the shaft is operating is uh, 15 hertz. So, as we have seen that P is equals to twice pi f t, there is a relationship between the uh, power and the torque. Now, power here of course, is in watt. So, since it is given in kilowatt, so this is 120 into 10 to the power 3, this is equals to twice pi f is 15 and t is the twisting moment which is in Newton meter. So, t then is equals to 120 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 30 pi and this gives us a value of 1273.24 so much of Newton meter. So, this is the value of uh, the twisting moment uh, that is being generated because of the power driven which is 120 kilowatt at a frequency of 15 hertz. Now, uh, given that the outer diameter of the shaft d outer is equals to d and consequently d inner is 3 fourth of the outer diameter which is 0 0.75 times d. So, if these are the values of uh, the shaft the d and 0 0.75 d then the value of the polar moment of inertia j is equals to pi by 32 uh, d outer to the power 4 minus d inner to the power 4. So, this is equals to pi by 32. Now, d outer uh, here is d. So, d to the power 4 minus 0.75 d to the power 4. Now, this gives us a value of 0 0.684 pi. So, this is equals to 0 0.684 pi by 32 times d to the power 4. So, this is the value of uh, j this is the value of the polar moment of inertia j. Now, as we know that the stress is limited to uh, 45 MPa. So, T by j is equals to tau by rho. Now, we will have to find out the diameter d. So, uh, here T is uh, 1273.24 so much of Newton meter into 10 to the power 3 so much of Newton millimeter divided by uh, 0 0.684 that is what we have computed times pi times d4 divided by 32. So, this gets multiplied by 32. So, this is equals to tau is limited to 45 MPa and rho is outer diameter by 2. So, 2 divided by d. So, from this if you compute the uh, value of d, d comes as 59.5. 51 millimeter. So, this is the uh, diameter of the shaft that we will have to use so that the stress is within 45 MPa. So, if we have to use a shaft, a tubular shaft which is transmitting power at 120 kilowatt and at 15 hertz frequency, then uh, the diameter of the external diameter of the shaft that is necessary is equals to 59.51 millimeter if we have to uh, restrict the value of the stress the sharing stress within 45 MPa. So, if we use uh, the diameter more than that then the stress level will be lower, but if we go diameter lower than this value then the stress level will go higher and as a result the shaft will fail. Well, uh, let us look into this uh, second example uh, which is uh, of the category which we have discussed today which is an indeterminate system. Now, you have a shaft A, B and C, A, B and C with solid circular section. Now, the diameter of this part it has a two oh part which is a stepped one and uh, the first part is having a diameter of 16 millimeter, the second one is having a diameter of 20 millimeter and it is held against rotation at A and at C. If the allowable shear stress in the shaft is 60 MPa, so tau is limited to 60 MPa, then what is the maximum torque that may be applied at B? So, the torque T which can be applied at B, maximum torque at B, so that the shear stress uh, does not go beyond 
60 MPa. Now, here since these two ends are clamped, so here resisting twisting moment will be T A and T C and uh, obviously, from the equilibrium equation we know that T A equals to T A plus T C. Now, uh, T A and T C being two unknown parameters from single equation, we cannot evaluate that. So, it is a uh, problem of again the indeterminate system. Now, let us look into this uh, free body diagram. If we take the free body of the shaft, now here we have uh, the twisting moment that we will have to evaluate is T, which is acting at B and the re resistive twisting moment at end A and A C, if we say T A and T C, then our equilibrium equation gives us that T is equals to T A plus T C. Now, note, please note here that this twisting moment which is acting here is a positive twisting moment, this is the vectorial notation of the twisting moment and the support twisting moment which we have taken is in the opposite direction T A and T C. T A and T C and this is the equilibrium equation T is equals to T A plus T C. Now, so this is equation 1. Now, another equation we can generate from the compatibility criteria. Now, when this is subjected to a twisting moment uh, here at T and mind that this is acting at this point at B. Now, once we have removed this particular support, it becomes a determinate system. Now, if we cut across here, and take the right hand free body, then since here there is no twisting moment. So, from part B to C, it is free of twisting moment, but between A and B, we have the twisting moment T. Now, if we try to find out the rotation here, which uh, let us call this as theta 1, which will be uh, occurring because of the twisting moment T at C. And uh, in this particular free end, uh, at C, because of the resistive twisting moment T C, there will be another rotation and let us call this rotation as theta 2. So, uh, what is going to happen is that this theta 1 and this theta 2, if we combine together, since this end is fixed, the it cannot undergo any rotation. So, theta 1 plus theta 2 should be equals to 0. So, this is the equation of compatibility and then this if we write theta 1 and theta 2, if we write now from theta 1 from this particular uh, free body diagram, theta 1 is going to be equals to T when it is subjected to the action of T over the length A B. So, T L A B by G J A B, that is the polar moment of inertia of the part A B. Now, since there are two different diameters, so J A B and J B C are different. Now, when this particular shaft is subjected to a twisting moment at C and undergoing a rotation of theta 2, now the value of theta 2 will be equals to the twisting moment T C. Now, for part A B, it will be length A B by G times J A B. Also, for the part B C, there will be a rotation. So, it will be plus T C times length B C divided by G J B C. And if you note here that the twisting moment T is acting in the positive direction, as we have defined earlier that the when it moves in an anticlockwise direction, so the direction of the twisting moment is in the positive x direction. So, uh, the rotation correspondingly also is positive and T C is acting in the opposite direction, which is, uh, uh, is a negative. So, theta 2 as a whole is a negative. So, theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to 0 will lead theta 1 equals to theta 2. And from this, we can find out the relationship between T C and T and we have already a relationship between T A, T, T A and T C. So, from this we can evaluate T A and T C. Now, let us compute these values. Now, as we have seen T is equals to T A plus T C, this is our equation of equilibrium, this is uh, equilibrium equation. Now, equation of compatibility,
equation of compatibility gives that theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to 0. So, this is the second equation. Now, we will have to apply the uh, torque uh, rotation relationship which is theta 1 is equals to T A times or let us call this as uh, theta 1 which is arising because of the T, uh, let us call this as T uh, times length A B divided by G J A B which we have seen just now that the the rotation theta 1 is occurring because of uh, twisting moment T which is over length AB times G J A B and theta 2 correspondingly is equals to which is corresponding to T C times length A B divided by G J A B plus T C length B C by G J B C. So, this is the total twisting moment which is negative according to the uh, sign convention which we have used. Now, if we uh, write down this theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to 0 as our equation of compatibility, then we have T L A B by G J A B this is equals to T C L A B by G J A B plus T C L B C by G J B C. So, this is the second equation after writing the relationship between the angle of twist and the uh, twisting moment and we have equation of equilibrium which is T equals to T A plus T C. So, if we now substitute the uh, numerical values then which we have that T length A B is 125 by G gets cancelled from either side. Now, before we go into this, uh, let us compute the value of the uh, polar moment of inertia uh, J for the two part. Now, J for A B which is of diameter 16 is equals to pi by 32 times 16 to the power 4 which is equals to 6434 millimeter to the power 4 and J B C is equals to pi by 32 times uh, this is uh, 20. So, 20 to the power 4 this is equals to 15708 millimeter to the power 4. Now, if we substitute now that T times length a B is 125 by J of A B which is 6434. This is equals to T C length A B is 125 by 6434 uh, plus we have uh, T C into 250 divided by 15708 and this comes that T into 0. 0194 is equals to uh, T C times 0.0353 and this gives uh, a value of T C as equals to 0.55 T. So, once we know this from equation 1 we get T A as equals to 0.45 T. So, now that uh, we know the values of T A and T C in terms of uh, T. Now, if we have to restrict the value of uh, stress uh, to a value uh, or we need to evaluate the values of the uh, twisting moment, uh, uh, what will be the uh, value of the twisting moment T if we restrict the stress tau to 60 MPa. The stress is to be limited to 60 MPa and correspondingly we will have to value find out the value of tau. Now, if we take the value of tau as now T by J is equals to tau by rho this we know. So, uh, we say the tau 
is equals to T rho by j and tau for a b part let us say is restricted to 60 is equals to T a times 8 is the rho because 16 is the diameter divided by j a b which is 6434. Since we are using the twisting moment T a over the part a b then twisting moment which is acting at T a uh, if we take a section uh, in between a b then the resistive moment also will be T a. So, over the part uh, a b if we compute the stress which is equals to T uh, times rho by j. So, T rho is 8 and j is 6434 from this the value of T a comes as equals to uh, and T a is uh, as we have seen is equals to 0.45 uh, times T. So, if we substitute that this gives us a value of 107.328 or 23, so much of MPa. Now, this is the value of the twisting moment from the part AB. Now, let us see the value of the twisting moment uh, from the part BC. Now, from the part BC again we can say tau is the shear stress which is uh, limited to 60 MPa is equals to T B rho B C by or T C rho B C by J B C. Now, T C is equals to 0 0.55 times T rho B C is equals to 10 and J B C is equals to uh, 15708. And uh, from this and tau as uh, we are limiting it to 60 MPa. So, from this if we compute the T comes as equals to 171.4 Newton meter. Now, out of these two values of twisting moment, now here if we have this is not T A, this is T because T A is 0.45 times T. Now, from this we compute we get T which is 107.23 MPa and from here we compute T which is 171.4 Newton meter. Now, if 171.4 Newton meter uh, acts at B, then the stress in the part AB will go beyond 60 MPa and the shaft will fail. So, we will have to restrict the value of the twisting moment at B as 107 Newton meter, so that the stress level uh, everywhere is within 60 MPa. Well, uh, we have another problem uh, the which is of again of uh, similar type that means of determinate indeterminate system. Now, we have a solid steel bar of diameter 30 millimeter is enclosed by a steel tube of outer diameter 45 millimeter and inner diameter 36 millimeter. Here we have a solid shaft of 30 millimeter diameter which is inserted within a tube this is the tube uh, of outer diameter 45 millimeter and inner diameter 36 millimeter. Now, both bar and tube are held rigidly at end A and B, this is the end A and this is the end B, they are held rigidly by the plate and joined as a rigid plate at B. Now, you will have to determine the maximum shear stresses in the bar and the tube. Now, because of this we will have to find out how much shear stresses are uh, generated in the bar and the tube and also you will have to determine the angle of rotation of the end plate. Now, the value of G is given as uh, 80 MPa. Now, let us look into the free body diagram of this particular system. Now, here as you can see that this is the solid uh, bar or the solid shaft and this is the uh, tube and this solid shaft is uh, inserted within the tube held at this end A and also we have uh, provided a plate rigid plate at B. So, this is uh, held between the two ends and it is subjected to a twisting moment the whole composite system is subjected to a twisting moment uh, which is of magnitude 500 Newton meter. Now, the diameter of the solid shaft is 30 millimeter, the diameter of the tubular part the external diameter is 45 and the internal diameter is 36 millimeter. Now, let us call that this is subjected to a twisting moment T 1 and this is subjected to a twisting moment T 2. So, the equilibrium equation will tell us that the T which is equals to 500 Newton meter is equals to T 1 plus T 2. So, this is the equation of equilibrium and also because of this twisting moment T 1 this will have a rotation theta 1 and because of this twisting moment T 2 
it will have a rotation theta 2. Now, since they are enclosed, the whole assembly is enclosed between two plates, so that it rotation theta 1 and theta 2, uh, they should be identical, because you cannot have dissimilar rotation for the two different parts, when they are uh, attached between the two plates. So, theta 1 should be equal to theta 2, and that is the compatibility. So, theta 1 is equal to theta 2, and theta 1 in terms of T 1, we can write as T 1 L by G J 1 and this is equals to T 2 L by G J 2. This material being the same, the G value will be the uh, same and J 1, J 2 uh, are the, the polar moment of inertia of the shaft and the tube. So, from these two uh, expression, we can evaluate the value of T 1 and T 2 and thereby the stresses. So, now let us compute that, that if we write down then the equilibrium equation 500 is uh, into 10 to the power 3, so much of Newton millimeter is equals to T 1 plus T 2. So, this is equation 1 and second equation is theta 1 is equals to theta 2, this is the second equation. And from first uh, theta 1, we can write that T 1 times L by G J 1 is equals to T 2 times L by G J 2. Now, uh, here, uh, since G is the same, so G G gets cancelled, L also is the same, it gets cancelled. So, T 1 is equals to J 1 by J 2 times T 2. Now, J 1 uh, for the solid shaft is equals to pi by 32 times the outer diameter is 30. So, 30 to the power 4 and this gives us a value of 7952.6. Millimeter to the power 4 and J2 is equal to pi by 32 times uh, we have 45 as the outer diameter minus 36 as inner diameter and this gives us a value of 237682, so much of millimeter to the power 4. So, this is the value of J1 and J2 and consequently, if we substitute here, we get T1 as equals to 0.33. 5 times T 2. So, uh, we have uh, T 1 plus T 2 as equals to 500 into 10 to the power 3. We have the value of T 1 as equals to 0.335 T 2. So, if we substitute by the equation 1, uh, we get the value of uh, T 2 as equals to 374.532, so much of Newton meter and T 1 we get as 125.532. 468, so much of Newton meter. Okay, so, these are the values of T 1 and T 2 and correspondingly then the shear stress tau 1 is equals to T 1 rho by J 1 and if we substitute the values, it will come as 23.7 MPa. Tau 2 uh, again as T 2 rho by J 2 and if we substitute the values, this will come as 35.5 MPa. So, this is the value of the shearing stresses for the uh, two elements. Now, theta since they are same, we can if we compute for theta 1, which is T 1 L by G J 1, this is equals to uh, if we substitute that 125.468 into 10 to the power 3 into L is 500 divided by G is 80 giga Pascal, so much of mega Pascal times 79521.6. If we substitute that, you get a value of 0 0.00986, so much of radian and if we multiply by 180 by pi, then you get so much of degree, which is 0 0.565 degree. So, this is the amount of rotation uh, that you have. Now, theta 1, uh, if we compute, theta 2 also is automatically can computed because theta 1 is equals to theta 2 and that is the rotation for the whole assembly. Now, if we like to compute the stiffness of the whole composite system, as we know that T is equals to G L by J times theta. So, G J, uh, G J by L that means rotation per unit length is our stiffness. So, uh, G J by L can be computed as T by theta. So, we know theta, we know T, we know how much is the torsional stiffness of the whole composite system.
Okay, then uh, to summarize now for this particular lesson, we have uh, evaluated the maximum normal stress uh, due to torsion in the sap and we have seen that how the failure line occurs because of this maximum normal stress. The direction of the normal stress if we compute the perpendicular direction to the uh, normal stress direction is the one which is the failure line and that is at 45 degree which we can see from the Mohr circle event. Then we have seen the evaluation of stresses and deformation in indeterminate system due to torsion and then we have seen some examples to evaluate stresses and deformation in bars of circular cross section due to torsion. So, in this particular uh, lesson we have uh, dealt with the indeterminate system and we have seen that how uh, you now internal resisting twisting moment can be evaluated in case of indeterminate system. In case of determinate system we had computed directly from the equations of equilibrium. Now, for indeterminate system apart from the equations of equilibrium you need the equation of compatibility as well and then you can evaluate the values of the internal resisting twisting moment and you can compute the value of the stresses. So, in fact, uh, this is the uh, last lesson on the module on torsion. We had four lessons uh, in this particular module which is on torsion. Uh, it had four lessons and the first lesson in the first lesson we had discussed the effect of torsion on solid circular sections and then we had seen that how to compute the stresses and the angle of rotation because of the twisting moment when it is acting in a solid circular shaft. Consequently, in lesson 2 we had looked into that how to compute the values of the stresses and the angle of rotation if the twisting moment acts in a hollow shaft, if the shaft instead of a solid circular one if it is a hollow one and that is what we had seen in the lesson 4.2. In the third lesson which is uh, L 4.3 we had seen the aspects of the power transmission through the shafts and uh, we had seen the relationship between the power and the torque and then from which we could compute that what could be the stresses and the angle of rotation in the shaft when that particular shaft is being utilized for transmitting power from one device to the other. And then lastly the fourth lesson which was uh, this particular lesson in which we have discussed the aspect of the evaluation of internal resisting twisting moment for indeterminate system and consequently what are the stresses and the deformation that occurs because of the twisting moment. Well, uh, we have some questions uh, set for you uh, which is uh, based on the discussions which we have on this module which is how, how the strength to weight ratio. Now, strength to weight ratio is a term which we have evaluated in fact, if you go through the lessons you will know that how to how, how the strength to weight ratio of a bar subjected to torsion is defined. Now, what is the torsion equation and what is the value of maximum normal stress in a solid circular shaft which is subjected to a twisting moment T. Now, is the maximum normal stress uh, which is subjected to a twisting moment that uh, we have uh, discussed and so you should be in a position to answer this question. We will give the answers for this question in the next lesson. Thank you.